One of the main claims of Zeitgeist is that the gospel story of Jesus is derived from the stories of previous pagan gods. They attempt to draw parallels between Jesus and these other gods to try to show that the story of Jesus is just a copycat story. Subsequently, these claims have all been debunked by scholars and historians. Zeitgeist appealed to Acharya S. for this theory. These claims can be found in her book, The Christ Conspiracy. Interestingly, it was the founder of Theosophy, Helena Blavatsky, and the Marxist Theosophist, Annie Besant, who popularized these types of arguments and inserted them into the New Age movement. The emphasis is removing uniqueness from Jesus Christ and Christianity because to the New Ager, humanity is leaving Jesus' age of Pisces, which they believe is now evil. According to them, many people are still stuck believing in Christianity, holding the world back from their new spirituality. So what better way to fix this problem than to discredit the avatar of the previous Piscean age, Jesus Christ? They will even go as far as to say Jesus never existed in order to lead people away from Christianity. Thus the masses are now on board with the new Aquarian world order. Even modern New Agers around today will utilize this deception. New Age spokesman and disciple of Alice Bailey in Theosophy, Benjamin Krem states, quote, The five major initiations which take one to liberation have their symbolic enactment in the life of Jesus. That is what the gospel story is really about. It is a very ancient story and has been presented to mankind again and again in different forms long before the time of Jesus." Unquote. When one compares Acharya S.'s book The Christ Conspiracy to Helena Blavatsky's book Isis Unveiled Volume 2, it becomes quite clear where Acharya got much of her material. For extensive rebuttals to this copycat thesis, see the following books, videos, and articles. The three things that Zeitgeist adopts from Theosophy and Freemasonry with respect to theology are 1. The belief that the story of Jesus was copied from other religions. 2. That Jesus is a representation of the Son. And 3. That Jesus ushered in the age of Pisces. It makes sense why Theosophists would spread these views because they want a world system for the age of Aquarius. And in discrediting Christianity and connecting Jesus to astrology, they can get apostate Christians on board. But why then does Zeitgeist spread this propaganda? Interestingly, the creator of Zeitgeist, Peter Joseph, has wanted a world system or utopia paradise on Earth since the release of the first Zeitgeist film. And as far as the spiritual aspect of life, you know, we're all pure spirituality. Of course there's something outside of understanding because we're only, we're just a fragment inside this larger whole. I end Zeitgeist with a very positive note. We're talking about the the consciousness, the whole consciousness, because you can scientifically orient yourself and, and even more importantly, spiritually orient, orient yourself into a collective consciousness to realize that we're all one organism. And the moment people stop dividing themselves up and generating religious division, political division, the moment they stop, people stop fighting amongst themselves is the moment paradise will dawn. Similarly, Zeitgeist's main source, Acharya S., has advocated the New Age of Aquarius that the elitist theosophists and Freemasons await in her 1999 work, The Christ Conspiracy, quote, But the future is now, and the maneuvers are being unveiled. As far as Christianity's role in this new age, Carpenter states, quote, Christianity, therefore, as I say, must either now come frankly forward and acknowledge its parentage from the great order of the past, seek to rehabilitate that, and carry mankind one step forward in the path of evolution, or else it must perish. There is no alternative. Despite the vilification of the so-called New Age movement, the fact is that we are entering into a new age. The age referred to in the Gospel tale is that of Pisces, and through contrivance and duplicity, coercion and slaughter, the fish god Jesus, the Piscean solar avatar, has indeed been with us, but now it is the close of the age, and his time is over. As Hancock says, we live today in an astrological no man's land, at the end of the age of Pisces, on the threshold of the new age of Aquarius. Traditionally, these times of transition between one age and the next have been regarded as ill-omened. Ill-omened verily as the ongoing destruction of the earth and the endless warfare over ideology will indeed produce the Armageddon so long awaited and planned by those who cannot live for today but must look towards an afterlife. By realizing the cultural unity revealed behind the Christ conspiracy, however, humanity can pull together and prevent this fall to create a better world. 
75 years before Zeitgeist's main source, Acharya S. penned that admission, the former president of Theosophy, Annie Besant, wrote something almost exactly the same, quote, The equinox will reach the sign of Aquarius, coinciding the great cycle of influence. We can indeed hope to put a complete end to all the influence of the past cycle, with its tyranny, slavery, war, and cruelty. This is one of the great transitional epochs, and the karma before humanity as a whole, and to every group in particular, is to reform itself from slavery, female subjection, war, and cruelty, and establish a civilization based on humanness and interest in spiritual matters. New Age author Gail Fairfield explains what is expected for the supposed upcoming age of Aquarius. She states, quote, The sign of Aquarius is the sign of focused concepts. It concentrates intently on developing its ideas and then applies them to the betterment of humankind. It has talent for rapidly correlating all the information available into a political, ethical, spiritual, technological system. Aquarius creates optimal features for individuals and for humanity because it needs alternatives, possibilities, and something to move towards. Overall, Aquarius is a reformer and visionary, working to create its utopia." Unquote. Isn't it interesting that right after Zeitgeist promoted the Aquarian New Age concepts in the first Zeitgeist film, the second film, Zeitgeist Addendum, then goes on to convince its followers to strive for a similar Aquarian one world system, new world order called the Venus Project. Indeed, the solution offered by the film Zeitgeist Addendum is that humanity needs to unite into the very same thing that Theosophy and Freemasonry wants it to unite into, a one world universal esoteric brotherhood of humanity, a new world order. I think that the coming new system that the occultists and speak of um, is it's really crucial to understand that what they're talking about is not going to look like what we think the new world order's control grid will look like. They believe that the utopia will be one uh, uh, of a spiritual utopia, one that's free of wars and religion. It's easy for a lot of people to have idealistic views about it. They're going to make it sound wonderful, uh, which is what like the zeitgeist addendum particularly does in the second part, where they talk about, oh, we're going to, um, we're going to like you know, have free energy. We're going to provide your needs. Uh, there's been talk about erasing all debts. That's more. The, the Venus Project is more what uh, is it Jacques Vallée? Jacques Fresco. Jacques Fresco. That's more what he's into. Okay, this is this is his utopian approach to um, the New World Order, where I literally heard him say on the addendum where he said, "We'll have no laws. All laws will be done away with." I thought to myself. Oh, well, I mean, nobody's going to have to work. It's just going to sound like wonderful. I mean, he's talking about how are people going to make livings. Well, you won't have to, and you can do whatever you want. And if you make a painting, you can give it to some. I mean, this this utopian world, but it's going to come at an extremely high price regarding the mark of the beast. It's not going to be what they're, they're cracking it up to be. And most likely, it's only going to come with massive depopulation. And they're going to probably try to pull that off a number of different ways. But you have the zeitgeist. Uh, this utopian approach, and then you also have the way the ascended master, some of the ascended masters say, will be done through a pro through a uh, project called Nasera, which you know is very similar in what the Zeitgeist Zeitgeist Addenda talks about. It's just kind of a different flavor of it all. So, which one they're actually going to be able to pull off? It's up if the Lord lets them do it. Um, it's kind of up to the Lord. I, it's hard to say which way it'll go.